Hi there, welcome to Pixelisco. This is the second part of Creator Selection Tool tutorial series. In this one, we're gonna learn some new tools and how to implement those in our daily drawings. So, let's get started. Let's start with the similar color selection tool. Now, this tool does as the name suggests is it uh, selects all the areas that has similar color and it uses actually a range for that function and the color range that will be defined by this fuzziness how does it work let's have a quick demonstration if fuzziness is at zero then it will select only the exactly same color so i am selecting here and these two colors are exactly same by means of value saturation and hue if I increase this fuzziness to some level and I am deselecting the selection by using Ctrl, Shift and A and I am again selecting, notice the selection is grown. If I decrease it, then also the range is not surpassed, but here is a there is a really little area that is selected so if I increase it more than 36 you have to experiment though it selected this if I increase more it selects more so at some point it will select the whole canvas So this is not even close to this color in by means of hue but this is also selected so that is that is the um, similar color selection tool this is pretty straightforward let's have an, another example so here also notice this both have exactly same color and if I now grow this selection bit by bit the areas will be selected in the same and uh, the range will be more broader so they are your similar color selection tool next in line is the contiguous selection tool now this tool does the same type of selection that is a similar color selection but here there is a catch that is the all the colors should be connected so it only selects the connected region so if i click here only this area is selected although the both the colors are same and this color was selected uh, were selected in the previous one so if i go to the previous tool and select this all these are selected because my fuzziness is really high yeah so this both two are selected and here the color is somewhat different anyway so in order to get both selected i need to get my brush and simply connect these two now if i go to my contiguous selection tool and click this notice the both are selected so it has the same fuzziness that is the color range it uh, works same as the previous one and then there is a grow and shrink selection so if i am increasing this the selection will be calculated then the selection will be grown so the selection is grown and if i decrease this a shrink of the selection will happen after the calculation of selection so this can be really useful for a certain situation i am making this to zero and now there is this feathering radius now there are two uh, two ways to view the selections one is this marching ant and one there is this uh, button if you click here this red is also another type of viewing the selection or mask this is really burning my eyes so you can change this color in the settings now i'll show you how this feathering radius works so 
I am deselecting that and if I increase the feathering radius notice the edge is really not defined and this is really blurred so that is the work of feathering radius now I am going back to the marching and selection so I am decreasing this to 0 now there is this limit to current layer now there is another um, difference between the contiguous selection tool and similar color selection tool in the similar color selection tool you have to be in the same color where the same layer where the color exists so if i am in different layer that is layer 14 whereas my color is in layer 2 then the this area will not be selected if even i click here the color is not here so this is not selected but if I am in contiguous selection tool and if I click, click here while being in layer 14 the color is selected but you can limit that uh, if you click this limit to current layer then it will behave same as the previous one so if I select here all the area that is not here is selected so there's that and I have to go to here in order to select this So the fuzziness is uh, really need to be increased in order to get yeah the fuzziness is somewhat uh, different uh, if you are lim if you are limiting this to current layer so there's your continuous selection tool Let, uh, let's have another demo I am deselecting this now, now if I in, in case of the similar color selection tool if I select this the both are selected because they have similar color so as expected in contiguous selection tool only this will be selected and if I increase the fuzziness the selection will be grown as you can see so if I select this to somewhat bigger value more and more areas will be selected that is same of same color so there's your contiguous selection tool now let's have a quick example about how to use the similar color selection tool in practical life so I made this yummy cookies in the background and I want to change the color of these chips really quickly so if I click one of them the all the areas are selected yeah uh, this uh, it was because my fuzziness was somewhat increased and why I increased the fuzziness because I had to uh, I have uh, different values here different types of colors here so I need my fuzziness to be higher and if I go to layer 15 and change the uh, blending mode to color because the color blending mode only shifts the hue and I want these chips to be blue so now I simply do this and in two seconds the color is changed Another trick is that you can hide this, uh, this selection by using the control H. So the selection is there. If I change this to red, you can see the selection is there, but it is hidden. So if I click control H again, the selection comes and I am clicking control shift A to get rid of this. So that's how you can easily use the um, the similar color selection tool for your for your daily purpose for some quick fix now this was not perfect example because you can see that um, there are some greens greens but in certain areas it can be really really effective next is the bezier curve selection tool now this tool can be really helpful but confusing at first 
so you need to learn this uh, to get better at digital painting and selection so i will just cover the tool itself and not the tool options right now i will cover those in perhaps a later tutorial tutorial because this tool is really confusing so if you click at any point in the canvas it will act just like the um, polygon selection tool but if you click in the canvas and now click and drag then there is this um, curve and these two handles the green curve and blue handles now the blue handles will uh, control the curve so if i increase this the curvature of the curve will be increased and i decrease this curvature of the curve will be decreased now notice that the two handles are on in straight line so this means that um, where my point my cursor is the second point that is the right side of those two points in the blue handle um, if I release this then notice that my second point uh, my immediate line will also uh, follow the follow the second uh, handle so if I increase this in very much so the line if I release this will not start from here it will follow the handle and start from here you can change that so in order to change that you have to break the handles so you you press alt and it breaks the handle now if you release the pin remember to release the pin at first and not the alt if you release the alt at first notice the handle uh, the first point of the handle is getting shifted and the handle is straight again so I am going to the um, horizontal and then I am going to the 90 degree almost and now I am sh um, releasing my pen. Now notice the, hand, uh, the second line and the line is, uh, is following the handle but those two have very sharp edges and this is really required for certain situation. Now for the beginners um, this can be really really um, daunting at first and confusing but uh, you have to practice to get the hang of it this is really not a great deal but it can be really useful for certain situation where you need a um, curvy edge and you cannot do that with uh, other selection methods and there it can be handy so there is your curvature selection tool so you need to essentially remember some things uh, which are that uh, you have to click and drag and then release and you have your alt to modify the second handle you cannot modify the first handle i have not found any ways to modify the first handle if you know then please suggest me in the comment section and you have to release after dragging you have to release the um, pain at first and then the alt so if you release the alt at first then this handle will be shifted and that will not be effective now let's make something useful with the bezier curve tool selection so this tool is really helpful for curvy designs and i am doing this curved stylized uh, swan for the demonstration so this demonstration is completely unprepared one and this will just work it's by no means perfect and I'm just trying to figure out the design. And now I'm I have inverted the selection and I've drawn the background. Now with a soft brush, I've tried and started the shading. And something to keep in mind that uh, I have decided that material to be wax and that has subsurface scattering and in the where the material have subsurface scattering you need to get your shadows to be more saturated now this thing is really important and your and your um, highlight would be more um, less saturated so this i am trying to figure out the shadow and now i have hidden my selection the selection is there just you are you cannot see this So 
so I am trying to draw some specularities. And yeah, now I am trying to draw some specularities. And as this um, is fairly wax looking, so the specular, it, this is not really shiny. If had it been really shiny, my specularity would be much more sharp. So in this case, I am doing this blurred specular lines. So the beak was really deep. And this blurred specular lines will give you an illusion that this is shiny but not too much. So you have to keep that in mind while shading the material. So I'm refining my specularities. And what I am doing now is called alpha lock. I will explain this in later tutorials. So don't you worry. The shadow is just an extra requirement. It is not actually a requirement. But yeah, it enhances the look. And now I am doing some global illumination. So the light will be illuminated um, back from the surface. And now I am doing the background so as to get my drawing popped out. And now I am doing um, some shift in hue by using the color blending mode in another layer. This is really not essential. Now I am doing some banding and look I am following the curvature of the surface so it um, strings, strengthen the illusion. Now these are all just extra fine details. There you go. This is your final render. This was the second part of Krita Selection Tool Tutorial Series. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment and share it with your friends. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any new video from my channel. So that's it for today guys, I'll see you in the next tutorial.